Yeah, hey guys, um, I got a review for you um, of the the ABUS Sentry Fit. Um, just wanted to start off with um, a few basics. Um, first off, the reason I chose this fit, I guess. Um, there are three main manufacturers that I guess you can say that make like reliable fits, um, and which which from what I read or what I've um, well, I guess. Yeah, I guess red um, is that I guess those three main ones would be, um, and this is again just opinion what I've read. And there's of course a lot more manufacturers out there, um, but anywho, um, got AVOS, Extreme Fire, and then there's Hunter Seeker Fets. With those three fets, you can basically you know find the right one for whatever build you're making. Um, and anywho, though they all got their own little differences. Um, you know the Hunter Seeker um, Armory, the Hunter Seeker Fets are. Um, they're more for like, you know, running like 5, 6, cell lipo, something, uh, you know, a crazy AG build, um, I guess, you know, something something like that. Um, and then after that, if you're running something a little bit more simple, like, you know, I'm just running a, um, like a 9.9 volt, volt LIFE battery, you know, 9.6, I, you know, 11.1 lipo. Even so, you know, Extreme Fire, these, and AWS FETs, they're rated pretty well. Um, so anyway, who, that's... I chose, I was between Extreme Fire, AWS, and since this has all these extra functions, you know, I got Burst Fire and uh, all that, compared to the price um, of the SWAB, um, this one is just, in my opinion, a better choice for what I was going for, um, and I just, I like, I really like how it's just really easy to program, you know, you've got the, camera's not reading it, but, you know, you have the little switches there to, you know, set for LiPo protection, you know, Burst Fire, you can adjust the ROF, uh, this one isn't adjustable to that exact ROF, but it's, uh, you know, percentage-wise, um, you know, burst fire, stuff like that. And I, I think that's really neat. Um, and anywho, though, um, I'm installing it on um, M4, Classic Army M4, um, wired to the, for crane stock. Um, and I um, probably can't really tell, um, but, you know, I, I guess, yeah, I guess you can tell. Um, but you, you, it comes with plenty of wiring, so you really don't have to go in that way. Um, it comes with plenty of wiring, you know, this is definitely enough for the buffer tube, and this is definitely enough for the motor wires, trigger, whatever. So you really don't need to buy any new wiring if you're, at least for this setup, or I'd assume almost any setup, because I've got plenty of extra length. So, don't worry about the wiring. Um, oh, and as far as the wiring, um, I was concerned with this, I guess, maybe it's just me, but... Um, since I have metal body and I found out that my gearbox, the body, everything conducts electricity and obviously that means bad if you get a short. Um, the, the wiring on this is nice and strong, like I, I really don't see myself tearing it. Um, it's, it's flexible enough for what you need and I like, I really like the, um, the coating that they use on this because it's durable which is nice. Um, so anywho, um, on to what I have now. Um, the basics, you don't really know all, need to know all the internals. Basically, it's just an M100 spring, um, some stemless turbo motor, and um, a 9.9 volt, um, 1100 milliamp LIFE battery. Um, my own little custom soldered thing that looks like a bomb. <laughs> Anywho, um, that's just the basics of it, but it's got some really bad overspin, something that almost every Sistema turbo or Sistema motor usually produces. Um, but. Anyway, it almost goes all the way back. Like um, this is this is this battery is hot off the charger. But on the first three few shots, I didn't get in this video. But on the first few shots, it, it almost did a double shot. But anyway, it's just like you know, it just goes almost the whole way back. So, which sounds really weird if you want to shoot it. I mean, that's that's all the way back right there. So, um, anywho, um, I guess this is a perfect test for the active braking function on this vet. Um, and there you go, that's the basics. Um, I'm going to show you a before and after, you know, um, ROF tests, all that stuff. And um, I'll get close the video and I'll set up the chrono. Okay, so the first chronograph test um, before the installation of the Sentry FET. Um, we got cars in the background, so uh, maybe a little bit noisy. Might cut in and out. Um, sorry about that. And just a note on the chronograph, um, it reads in rounds per minute, so. I got the little calculator that I can just do that. Um, so, you know, just bear with me when the readings look kind of weird.
So I don't know, it's looking pretty consistent. So, um, 1538 rounds a minute, uh, 60. So about, uh, 25.6, you know, three continual forever. Uh, so, um, just to note, before um, I do install the FET, nothing's gonna change. I was planning on changing some, sh uh, reshimming it a little bit, um, popping that more time spring in there, but I don't wanna change anything. So, literally, it's just gonna be the same exact thing besides for um, the FET, and then I'm gonna use their wiring. The current wiring in here is some um, solid copper core 14 gauge. Hey guys, um, a little add in note. I just remembered a few things uh, when I was working on this. I, I'm forgetting some stuff, which is a little, little bit tired, so it's probably why I'm saying um all the time and anywho and all that fun stuff. Anyways, though, the I'm I'm installing one more thing that I did not mention. I said that there are going to be no no variables besides for the MOSFET um, once I change it. Um, that that's pretty much true, but I'd just also like to add in that with that last setup, um, the first chrono view without the FET, um, I'm running it. I was that was without a fuse, and. Uh, it, it's kind of a temporary setup with the solid wiring and everything. Um, any, anyways, though, the I'm installing this fuse. It really shouldn't create less resistance um, because it's just a direct solder. Unlike the bulb fuse, where it's um, contact, it, you know, it, it, the current flows just through contact, not an actual solder joint. So, I, so you really shouldn't expect any change. I just want to note that I will be installing um, uh, a resettable uh, fuse. This is my own little design. Uh, I, if if ABUS runs out, you're going to get one of their FETs. I just want to note that I will be selling these. Uh, I'll, I'll try to post a link in the description when I can. I don't really have it up and running yet, but you always, you know, PM me if he's out and you need to contact me for one. Whatever reason, I have a 16 amp and a 24 amp. So, with that said, that this very the variable of the solid core wiring to this wiring, along with the fuse, is a really only difference. Um, which again, I, I really wouldn't expect any difference because this is, I'm not running a high voltage battery, so this is plenty and the fuse shouldn't create any more resistance. So just, I, I just want to note it though. And also another thing that I forgot to mention was that I mentioned the three most reliable FETs, well, three, some of the most reliable FETs at least. And the reason I mentioned that, uh, and I forgot to add on to that was because when you're, when you get a MOSFET, you want a reliable one, or else it's going to run into huge problems. Like, for example, if you if you get a cheaper one, they they blow up, and basically, you know, the fuse, the MOSFET is once they break for the most part, there's no going back. They literally, the cheaper ones will pretty much just blow up. And what what usually happens is that they open when they when they um when they break, they leave your gun shooting on full auto, which if you go to any actual field or really just any field even if with your friends that's a really big deal because first off you might get kicked off the field for life i know some fields are that way and um third of all you might shoot some of your friends in the eye which is obviously really bad um and third of all if if you do get a cheaper most vet uh it, it's it can blow up your lipo battery if you're running a lipo or really any battery it will blow it up or it can melt it or anything so which is why i went with you know a good mosfet or else you're gonna run into very 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 serious problems so anyways this is just a little quick add and um sorry about the jumbled whole thing Alt again some stuff nothing changed the only result change was the wiring um and i installed a resettable fuse which again shouldn't make a difference so um basically all you should be noticing is the difference between the mosfet um so yeah and um, as you remember, in the last one, they, uh, the, um, the overspin was really bad, and here's the new one. See, it's basically perfect. Like, I'm not getting any overspin, really. Um, I just want to show off the, the burst function on here. Um, that one. And again, you need to do, I forgot how many shots, I think three or four shots. It's the timer works pretty well. I mean, as you can see, it's a nice three round burst, and the piston doesn't stop cock back or anything lame like that. It stops right there. Obviously, when the battery starts to die, you might get like you know two and a half or, or something like that. But you know, right off the bat, it's basically perfect, which is which is really all you can expect out of a timer based uh, three round burst. With the burst function, it's not you don't have to hold a trigger down the entire time. So it's just a 
tap. Well, it looks kind of weird, but because um, I'm just trying to barely hit it. So you just tap the trigger, and then three rounds will fall on itself. So you can just, you know, just get get a really quick three, you know, nine rounds out there. Um, also, if anybody's wondering, it does do this thing on full auto. If you tap it, I mean, all it senses is a small little jolt of electricity, and you're on first, so you know it assumes that. So I mean, it, you're gonna do it on semi or full. You know, it doesn't really matter. It's not like it affects your full auto. Hey guys, so the last ROF test, um, this one's going to be done indoors just because it's about 10 p.m. at night, don't want to wake up the neighbors, stuff like that. Um, so, anyways, I'm going to have to put the camera down once I start it because I've only got two hands, but um, here we go, last ROF test. Okay, so again, about in the 1560s, um, and which results in about 26 rounds per second. The last one was just a hair under. Um, so, you know, in, in reality, for me, um, it wasn't much of an RF boost. Um, I, my my best reason is because um, the the trigger contacts that were in there previously were actually pretty clean, and um, I also installed the resettable fuse, which shouldn't cause much more resistance but it's still a tad um, but what what you can do is that if you are going well also keep in mind that with uh, with most chronographs it's not exactly I mean chronographs uh, with um, scratch that with um, most vets it's not exactly more for the RF boost most people don't experience much in RF boost unless the trigger contacts are filthy um, so it's not exactly that it's just it's a much more efficient way of routing the power from the battery to the motor and you get all these extra functions and all this fun stuff and you know it's it's got a lot of good stuff in it it's just it's just an upgrade from the stock trigger contacts so for the most part you really should not be buying a FET for the ROF boost um, I mean I still want to get mine up to maybe the 30 so what I plan on doing however is um, I currently have a 3 cell I, I have enough room for another cell I'll buy another cell install it and then I could use the MOSFET and limit the rate of fire, like maybe to this 85% or something like that. So if you do want to increase the rate of fire, um, this MOSFET would actually be a great buy since what you can do is you can just upgrade the battery that you have and then just lower the the ROF on it, you know, down to 85%, 50%, you know, whatever you're going for. Um, so, you know, again, not much of a big difference. It's mainly for the features, all this fun stuff. And then if you want an RF boost, I'd recommend, you know, installing an extra cell on your battery, buying a bigger battery, whatever, and then just limiting the ROF. Um, anyways, though, in conclusion, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's a good buy. Um, you know, it's, the wiring's good, the MOSFET itself is good, uh, I, I really don't have any complaints, um, and, like, you know, it's it's nothing that I can really complain about. I mean, for the price, it's much better than in my well, in my opinion, it's much better than almost any other Fed out there in its price range. And you know, as long as you're not running a five six cell lipo, in which case you should probably get a hundred seeker Fed. Um, so, anyways, with that said, it's a good most Fed. Um, I've heard they last for years on end without issues, maybe even longer. Um, I really haven't heard of any people complaining about the failure rate of them, uh, which, like I said, is very bad if you get a fail. And, you know, I got a tad ROF increase, not that big of a deal. Um, but I do plan on installing an extra cell, lowering the ROF on the MOSFET, which will then lead to ROF increase. And, you know, like I said, three burst function works well, the active braking works well. Um, I, you know, the wiring, you know, I already mentioned this, the wiring's good. Most FET's a pretty small size. I don't know, there's really nothing to complain about. It's, it's a great FET. I'd recommend it for anybody who's looking to, you know, maybe get some, you know, just get some more performance on their gun, upgrade stock trigger mechanism. Well, not mechanism, upgrade the whole, tr uh, the, the current routing system, I guess you could say. Um, you know, it's a good FET.